especialista, você biografou o câncer e depois os genes em trabalhos muito acurados, muito detalhados. É, e agora o mundo se vê às voltas com um personagem bem mais misterioso e de difícil detecção, que é o novo coronavírus. Com base no que você tem lido, estudado e falado, dado entrevistas a respeito da pandemia, o que já é possível saber de concreto a respeito do novo coronavírus e por que ele é um personagem assim tão insidioso? Uh, well, thank you for having me on your show. Um, I should... uh, obrigado. Um, we, so I should first say that um, I'm well known as an oncologist, but my main training is as a viral immunologist. I, my PhD is in viral immunology. In, my, in fact, my lab still works on viruses and immunology, not coronaviruses, but other viruses. And of course, there are many similarities across many viruses. So, so that is why I've, um, I've, I've been thinking about this problem and been very involved with this problem for a while. I'm part of um, the New York State uh, Governor's Commission on uh, sort of the post-COVID response, um, among other many other committees. Um, and of course, I'm a doctor in New York, and so I've seen the pandemic move through patients and colleagues and nurses um, in, the, in the most front uh, frontline manner. So with that background, uh, let me um, say a few things about coronavirus in particular, uh, or SARS-CoV-2 in particular, um, that make it a, a, an especially difficult uh, um, virus to deal with. The, um, The first thing is that uh, viruses are characterized by uh, the, the level of infectivity that they have. Uh, in other words, how many people, if you're infected yourself, how many people would you, can you infect potentially? Um, uh, some viruses like measles uh, is a good example, have a very high degree of infectivity. Um, and so, um, you know, one person with measles can infect four or five people uh, with, with measles. Um, and of course, if you infect more than one person, the number rises exponentially. Um, coronaviruses um, have a high degree of infectivity. Um, uh, and that number is not as high as measles, but it's a very high degree. So if you, if without any, in a general population that is not immune to the corona, to SARS-CoV-2, the degree of infectivity is, is high, that's, the, that's one reason. The second reason is that, and that is uh, an extremely complex reason, that is that there are many people who are asymptomatic, uh, who do not have symptoms of coronavirus, who still can infect other people. Now, this is a very unusual feature of, of this virus. Um, it is unlike, uh, for instance, a, a virus such as Ebola, where you have, uh, you develop symptoms, and so you know that you're carrying the virus and therefore you can isolate and potentially quarantine such patients or isolate and quarantine yourself. But this virus doesn't seem to have, have uh, that property. In fact, asymptomatic transmission is now known to be one of the major sources of transmission of uh, SARS-CoV-2 in this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and thirdly, uh, we do not fully understand the immune response to this virus. We are beginning to understand the immune response to this virus. Um, the classical way that one designs a vaccine against any virus is to study the immune response and develop typically uh, something that will uh, elicit antibodies against the virus. The bizarre thing that we're finding out about coronaviruses, this is from data that came out even yesterday and day before yesterday, is that in most patients, um, the virus causes a, a relatively self-limited illness. In other words, you feel sick, Uh, many people know the symptoms, you lose a sense of smell, you can lose a sense of taste. It infects the lung cells, it inf infects your respiratory epithelium. In most cases, uh, this resolves in the, over the course of 10 to 14 days, although during that time you might be uh, spreading or transmitting the virus. However, in some cases, um, it, patients, for reasons that we don't understand, 
do not raise an appropriate immune response against the virus. Uh, they ra raise a dysfunctional immune response against this virus. Uh, this immune response is characterized, we now know, by the inability to mount a particular kind of signal uh, called an interferon, particularly some kinds of interferons. Um, patients do not generate these interferons, and then they progress to a severe disease. So that's one problem. And we think that in the second phase or in the very late phase of the infection, it's not, not even the interferons that's the problem. Your body generates a storm of signals. It, it overreacts or has a hyperreactive uh, quality. Uh, it's been described as immune misfiring. Uh, it's like uh, giving someone a gun and the gun, instead of shooting the right target, shoots all sorts of targets around it and makes a big mess. Um, this is probably the cause of this uh, diffuse pneumonia and sepsis that uh, accompanies uh, the viral infection in some patients, and that is the severest form of the, uh, of the infection. So to summarize, these three qualities, one, that it has a high degree of infectivity, Number two, that asymptomatic individuals can carry the virus and infect other people and therefore cannot be identified, isolated, and quarantined. And number three, that we still don't understand uh, the immune response to the virus, but to some extent, the immune response in some individuals happens to be, uh, happens to be dysfunctional. These three qualities make it a very unusual virus and a, very, uh, and a virus that spreads fast and uh, therefore can cause a, uh, such a terrifying pandemic.